Hey all, I'm TJB Chris, and I'm here for an impromptu part three for my series, TJB Chris's Tandy Education Connection. This intro was filmed after the outro because I did this just kind of on a whim on a Thursday morning right before work. So today we're going to convert one of my Model 4s into a student station. I have the ROM set, I have ROM adapters, and we are going to turn this thing into a student station and then you'll see it work. So let's get to the bench. Oh, well, we've got a Model 4 on the bench. We've got my one of my laptops, an EEPROM programmer, an EEPROM eraser. What are we doing? Well, while I'm starting to erase this EEPROM, we are going to try to convert this Model 4 into a Network 3 student station. I have the ROM images, but in order to do this, there are two ROMs that need replacement. Not just the CROM, like you would do with a FRED, uh, 759, but you also have to do the AROM as well. If I could turn this Model 4 into a student station for Network 3, it'd be one less machine I have to connect to the cassette, and I could do the final way of booting this thing for Network 3, and I think that would be a fun demo. So welcome to the unofficial part four, assuming this actually works. Well, the other EEPROM erases, I have a 28C16 EE prom in my, GXQ, or my GQ4X4 programmer. It's early, folks. It's pre-work. And I'm just going to program this with the student station CROM that I've already ripped here. Okay. And now we're just going to write this. And we'll give it a read back. It says it verified, but looks good to me. Okay. Once the other one's done, we'll write the AROM. All right. While this is still going, we've got about four minutes to go. I'm going to take apart this Model 4. You've seen enough of that in previous videos. So I apologize for the lighting down here. I've got a real bench on the unfinished side of my basement outside of the computer room here, which is great, but the lighting ain't the best for the camera. But hey, it's part of its charm, right? It helps set the atmosphere, set the tone. Model 4 is apart, the shield's off in the back, and it's time to take the EEPROM out. We'll take this out and give it a blank check to make sure that we are good. EEPROM's in the programmer. I'm going to do a blank check on this just to make sure. We are good. Okay, let's open my AROM. And make sure that looks good. Okay, Radio Shack Model 3 Basic. Perfect. Let's write this. I apologize, the camera's on the screen, rather than capturing it. This is kind of an impromptu video, so. Excellent, we now have a written A and C ROM. So this is a non-gate array Model 4, an early one too, a very early one. You can see a lot of rework and bodge, um, which was common. You can see the extra pins for the Z800 CPU that would have been there. It was originally in the Model, in the model 4's plans, but that chip apparently was always just a few thousand gates away from completion, and by the time it was, nah, nobody cared about the Model 4 anymore except educational institutions, apparently. Anywho, A ROM, B ROM, C ROM. And so I'm going to pull this ROM as a 2364 compatible ROM, but I don't have a 2364 compatible EEPROM, and they're almost impossible to find, so I bought this little adapter. I could have made it, but eh. And all we do is we take our. ROM chip. So now it's going to go right into the AROM socket. Uh, one thing I will note is that if this works, at least as long as this is in, I can't put the shield on. I don't think because I think this is going to stick out too far. And I had this problem with the graphics card upgrade on the Gate Array machine. Either way, let's pull this ROM out and get the EEPROM in. AROM is in, and now we'll do the CROM. And our 28C16 is in. So now we have our upgraded AROM and CROM. I'm going to turn this around and we're going to see if we get the cassette basic uh, prompt when I power it up. I should get a CAS prompt. If I don't, then either we have a ROM image problem, an adapter problem, or this is just not going to be the right ROM set for this machine. All right, moment of truth. Let's power it up. Hope you don't get smoke and hope it works. All right, we'll power it up. Here we have cassette prompt. Okay, let's take this into the other room. We'll just put the cover on without the screws and I'm gonna connect it to network three and see if it actually bootstraps itself. This'll be cool. 
Okay, the network three is running, only the host is and the controller. And then over here is our recently upgraded model four. So let's see if we can get this thing to play nice and bootstrap. So you'll notice there's only one cable running to the model four now. There's no cassette connected. So I'm just gonna hit enter here. And the way this works is I should be able to run the system command and then go slash one, two, three, six, three. And that should eventually result in a baud rate prompt. And it did. Look at this. D-I-R. Look at that. We have a self-booting Model 4 student station, just like Radio Shack would have sold. And now, this is one less machine I have to run a cassette cable for, and I can now boot Network 3 all of the ways that Radio Shack intended. I can do Model 4 student station. I can do Network 2 cassette. And for the bougie types, I can do the floppy disk boot on the Model 4 that's back there now. We're set up for the next video, and it's going to involve a Coco along with the Model 3 and 4 machines. So, so very cool. That's, that's really freaking neat. We have a, a Model 4 student station. I might just leave this in this configuration because it is really freaking neat. One thing I want to do real quick before we close out is I want to show you what the host station looks like when I run this command. So I'm going to throw the camera back on the tripod. I've got my command all staged here to boot the network directly over the serial port, and we'll just see what the host says. And here we go, bootstrapping now. Oh, interesting, student 11, one file, so it's just a standard network load, but there we go, and I have my baud rate prompt. It's really that simple, it's just a modified ROM to boot straight over the serial port via the Network 3 protocol. Uh, I should note that the student station ROM loses a bit of Model 3 functionality, uh, particularly the route functionality in Model 3 mode goes away, and I think there's something else, which if there is, it's going to pop up on your screen right now. Either way, this is a really cool addition to my Network 3 setup, and kind of completes it in my mind. There's really not much more that is missing from this other than, you know, all the software in the world, but whatever. So that's going to do it for this short and impromptu part three to my Sept Tandy series, TJB Chris's Tandy Education Connection. Thanks for joining me. I'm TJB Chris, and next time we will actually cover educational software on the machines, as evidenced by the presence of the Color Computer 2 here today. Thanks for joining me.